Hi, I'm Chris McAllister with Western Forest Products Health and Safety. Today I'd like to talk to you on the subject of hand falling second growth timber. Primarily on the coast to date, most of the second growth has been fell with the use of machines on lower slope grounds. As we go forward, we're going to start going up into steeper and steeper country which will require hand fallers to fall that timber. It's important to note that there are differences between old growth and second growth. Historically on the coast, for many of us, we've always thought there was required less skill to uh, the falling of smaller diameter timber, but it's our position that both types, old growth and second growth, require a high skill level, adherence to the standards, and all stakeholders to be aware of what the procedures, what the hazards and the conditions are that the fallers find themselves in. Here in an old growth forest, first thing that comes to mind is the size of the timber. From a fallers perspective, this is a nice place to work. You can come in here, put your gas down. You can achieve high volumes with minimal moving around in the quarter. From the safety, faller safety perspective, he's able to do his risk assessments, formulate his plan, because as you can see, you can right from the butt up through to the canopy, he gets a good visual, it tells him lean, any potential overhead hazards, it's all quite clear. Here we are now in a second growth stand. When we spoke earlier, we talked about fallers doing risk assessments. Well, in this type of timber, you can see it's very dense in here. The hazards are going to come from above. Faller must check the tree out from the bottom all the way up, look for his lean, everything, but he's got to assume something of this nature or, or larger could come out of the canopy. This timber here is averaging 100, 110 feet tall. If you're struck by something like this or bigger, you're not expecting it you could be injured. Okay, now that I've said that the hazards are coming from above, then how do we mitigate these hazards? It's important for the faller when opening up that he's falling out into an open area. No excessive brushing. 45 degrees is a good habit to get into. It keeps it away from the face. Not gonna hit something that could fling back at him. But if we take an individual tree, let's just go through the steps. He's done his risk assessment applies his undercut, starts on his back cut. He's got to be looking up to see that initial movement. The initial movement is the key. The initial movement will show him two things. He'll gather the information that's possibly sitting back or it is going ahead and there's something tied up above. If he does notice that and, he can, and it pulls away, he can get out of the way by going down his escape trail. If not, he's just cutting, looking down, he's going to get hit. A major issue for fallers falling second growth timber is maintaining control. Now the reason for that is the height, 100, 110 feet versus the butt diameter. Now you can imagine, faller applies an undercut, puts his back cut in, tree starts to sit back, there's a huge amount of leverage on a 12 inch butt diameter. In many cases, uh, if he doesn't get a wedge in quick enough, it wants to keep going. And, and these are so small, that it's easy to say apply your wedge right away, but the saw, the bar is like that. You try to get your wedge and you just spit it right out. So the main thing to do here is to keep fallers falling within the lean and not try to take them off the lean too hard. Control is a major issue. Wind affects them. As you see on the forest floor here, the debris that comes out of the canopy, it's just not a safe place to be. So we have to be aware that these trees Due to their height, they, they do a lot of movement, way more movement than you get in uh, the same wind in a light breeze in old growth. Here's a good example of fir root rot. This is commonly found in second growth stands. And as you can see, we have the undercut, back cut, step, everything's good, but we're missing 50% of the hinge wood. This hinge is what the faller's controlling the tree with. All the more reason not to go against the lean Faller's limited to how much control he has with this fur root rot. Another potential hazard commonly found in second growth stands is the presence of hardwoods such as alder or maple. These species, generally speaking, live to 40 to 50 years, become decayed and fall down. Fallers have to be very cognizant of overhead, brushing, anything like that cannot occur. These species are also shallow rooted, 
many times come with heavy liens entangled in the upper canopy. All the more reason for non-fallers not to dictate where they want the timber fell. Falling of the timber should be left to the bull buckers and their fallers because the fallers are very limited to what they can do with this type of timber to fall it safely. The most important condition found within a second growth stand is the natural culling that occurs. As the, as the stand gets taller, the weaker trees die off. There's a lot of rot in this type of timber. Other evidence of a culling forest, of course, is the, the uh, material that's on the ground. You get this, this is root rot, wind's gone through, pu pushed it over. But some of this material is still solid. As you can see, it's really necessary for a faller to cut this on the ground so you don't get any, anything flinging back at you. Now with natural culling, of course you get the stronger timber reaching for the sun and as it goes up it's, it's shedding its limbs. So as we look around this forest right here, you see nothing but a maze of dead limbs. So the faller has got to consider up top there's going to be limbs that are very brittle. It doesn't take much to break these off so any type of, of disturbance from another tree We've got to look up and, and assume that they're all limb tied. So we have to fall that accordingly, f try to get your timber to go out, but assume that something is limb tied. The wind can play a huge role with the natural culling that's occurring within a second growth stand. As we see here, we have root rot, which was in this tree. Wind came through one day and over it goes. This is fairly recent. So it tells you, it also gives the faller a, more of a story about what's going on within this forest. You, you just can't work in the same types of wind that you get in the old growth stands to safely fall second growth. An important issue which ties into our uh, quarter management is, is how we manage these danger trees. Now this area illustrates it very well. The falling of this prematurely through the timber or an inadequate hole, this will come apart on you. You've got to be aware of them, you've got to have a plan for the removal, but do not fall these through the timber. It's, it's definitely going to come in contact with something. And when, when I just give it a little wiggle, you can see that it's very, it is unstable, but it's going to be the disturbance if I, if I brush this. I have to be aware, I have to have a plan to remove it, but do not fall this ahead of time without having a nice large opening for the control factor of the small butt diameter. If you lose control and it clips one of these, it's coming at you. So don't take it out prematurely. Many times a faller may encounter a hazard that he feels should go at this certain point. If he has to move up the hill in behind himself, open up for it and take it out, he must return to the low point. It's very important that we always get back to the low point. We want to bring our timber up in a continuous progressive face. We also have to think of the faller working next to us. We've got to get back to the low points, bring our face up progressively. The faller's overall quarter management does change somewhat in second growth timber, especially regarding debris that was left behind from loggers 50 to 100 years ago. This is the type of thing, a piece of wire cable left behind. It could be steel, telegraph wire hanging from the trees. Always keep an eye open for that sort of thing so that it doesn't present a hazard to you. When falling second growth timber, we tend to think of the amount of stems per hectare, that sort of thing. But we also got to look at different conditions that are found within a second growth stand. We have to be cognizant of the fact that in, back in the day, old line was left behind. And there's lots of these found, especially when you're coming up from the water where uh, areas were A-framed. Back in the day, fallers used springboards. They got above the swell of the butt, took the tree off here, but it leaves a high stump. The potential hazardous condition for a faller, I'll just use this windfall sapling here. If, if you're too close and you were falling it and lay this way, it gets up on top, it could come right back at you. This other piece behind me, a larger piece of second growth, it's possible you could strike this, kicks the tree hard, it hits another piece of second growth, possibly with a dead top, down that comes. So the faller has to be aware of where he's going to place these and it might not all be in the same lay. He might be going this way and he has to throw them out to work around these. The older the, the second growth, the higher these stumps are and they do pose a potential hazard to fallers.
A major factor for fallers in second growth is managing fatigue. Due to the high number of stems per hectare, during the average course of a day, a faller could take down three times as many stems as he would normally in an old growth setting. And during this process, he is carrying the saw. In old growth, many times the saw is dogged in, the weight is off his body, and the saw is cutting. In second growth, cuts are way faster, tree goes over, he's on to the next one. Historically, we've always used the larger saws for the big timber on the coast, but now that we're gonna move into smaller DBH, we're gonna to need to look at smaller saws that are designed for this type of timber. Now, the difference in the weight is seven to 10 pounds. So over the course of the day, huge benefit to the faller to run smaller, lighter gear, which is designed for that timber. We also have to remember the number of assessments that are necessary when in second growth timber. That would be upwards of three times or greater. And these assessments are very important because we spoke about the decay of the timber, the overhead hazards that are present in a second growth stand. The faller must learn to pace himself. A good rule of thumb, burn a tank, stop, do your assessments, refresh yourself if need be, resume work again. In some cases, maybe stop even before you burn a tank, depending on the timber or what the situation is. But no one can manage your fatigue level better than you. We want all stakeholders to respect the fact that hand falling second growth does present its own unique set of challenges. We also know that the skill level must be at a high standard. If not managed correctly, fallers may find themselves mentally and physically fatigued. It's very important for all stakeholders involved that we treat second growth timber with respect.